two bits of mild steel and a piece of tool steel. This is going to be the head, this is going to be an R8 adapter and this is going to be the actual cutting tool. Let's start with the head and get it over into the lathe and then onto the mill. I started by facing both ends of the part. This was so that the milling machine vise had two flat and parallel surfaces to grab hold of. In its former life, this piece of stock had had a piece of titanium tube pressed down the centre of it, so that had to be drilled out. I then drilled a 25mm hole 15mm deep, which will later become a locating feature for the R8 adapter. Off to the milling machine we go. I used the carbide face mill to throw swarf all over the workshop. It also cut two flats on the part. Hmm, let's call it the tool holder, shall we? The flats were to enable me to hold the tool holder in different orientations in the vise while performing later machining operations. Such as this one. The tool holder is set up on some blocks at roughly 10 degrees for cutting the bottom face and the slot for the tool. The tool slot was roughed out with a 10mm end mill. It took six passes, removing two millimetres depth of cut on each pass. A quick tool change, then a finish pass with a 12mm end mill to take the tool slot to final size. Plenty of coolant here to try and flush out the cut chips. A quick test fit of the tool. The bottom corners of the slot just needed a quick flash over with a file. I used a shell mill to cut a large relief down one side of the tool holder. I ended up climb milling for these cuts because the x-axis feed motor was really struggling with the cutting forces. You can see that the cutter's spinning clockwise and the tool holder's moving away from us, so the teeth on the cutter are effectively pulling the tool away from us. This means that the motor has to do a lot less work. It does however tend to mean that there's a bit more vibration and the surface finish isn't quite as good. That's the bulk of the work done on the bottom piece. The piece of high speed steel is going to go in here like this. We need to put some holes along here to put some grub screws in so that this doesn't fall out. And then we'll get to making the, the spindle adapter that's going to go in here and hold it in the machine. A little bit of engineer's blue on the surface of the part makes it a lot easier to see all of the layout lines. I centre punched the hole locations so they were easy to see on the milling machine. Each of the holes was through drilled at 5mm diameter, counter drilled 13mm deep at 10mm diameter, and then hand tapped M6 by 1 for the four locking screws that would hold the tool in place. A quick blow through with the airline to get all of the swarf out of the threads. And a test fit to make sure that the threads were formed correctly and that the tool was going to be securely held in the holder. Nice. On to the R8 adapter. I started by centre drilling a piece of low carbon steel. If you centre drill before you face, you don't end up with that awkward little nubbin left in the centre of the part, because you don't have to cut all the way to the centre because there's a hole there. I pulled enough material out of the chuck for the full length of the R8 adapter. I then supported this with the tailstock. Using the power feed and a carbide insert tool, I turned down the outside diameter of the part. At this stage the dimensions aren't important, I just wanted to get all the rust off the outside of the diameter and make sure that the part was perfectly circular. I could then cut the part to length, 
flip it around and mount it in the collet chuck. This ensures some resemblance of concentricity while I centre drill the other end. This end is going to be the end that the drawbar screws into. After centering and facing, I drilled an 8mm pilot hole. This is followed by a 25 64 or 9.9mm drill, which is the drill size for a 7 16 UNF thread. I used the centre drill to make a nice lead in to the hole. This is so that when it's shoved up into the mill, the drawbar can easily find its way into the threads and locates correctly. I think deep down inside, secretly, you knew that this was going to be the next shot. With the threads cut, I could start shaping the spindle end of the adapter. This is the end that goes up inside the machine. I managed to get my speeds and feeds nailed and made some really nice chips. I had to switch to a high speed steel tool to make the finishing passes. This was because I didn't have enough room to get in with the carbide tool because the holder was hitting the revolving centre. With the straight section turned, it was time to cut the keyway, so back over to the milling machine. I used a 532 slot drill to cut the keyway, and it's the only one I had, so slow and steady wins the race here. Lots of coolant to flush away those chips, the last thing we want to do is break that little slot drill. The spindle's doing about 2200 RPM, the feed rate's about 4 inches per minute, at about 25 thousandths depth of cut. I set up a known good R8 collet in the lathe, then used a dial indicator to set the angle of the compound so that I could accurately replicate the taper. With the taper cut, I could get on with machining the spigot that interfaces with the tool holder. It was at this point where I nearly screwed the whole job up. Remember that 25mm hole I drilled in the back of the tool holder? Well, I was aiming for a shrink fit on the spigot. Problem is, I turned a 20mm spigot. What an idiot! Luckily there was enough material that I could turn another one without running into the fat end of the taper. With the disaster avoided, I could make a relief cut along the straight section of the adapter. This just provides some clearance when you put the adapter up into the spindle of the milling machine. As for the peanut butter, that just makes the part extra tasty. Cool that one down. Warm that one up. And put the two together. and maybe just a quick insurance weld, just to be sure. A quick clean off with the wire brush to get rid of the heat marks. And I suppose we'd better check to see if it fits in the milling machine. I ground up a high speed steel tool with a large nose radius and mounted it into the machine vise. This allowed me to use the quill feed to make a cut on the outside diameter of the tool holder. I'd got a piece of 12mm square high speed steel to use as the tool for the fly cutter, so I set about grinding in some relief angles and a nice big nose radius. And here it is, the finished cutter. Let's see if it works, shall we? I'm really happy with how this project's turned out. 
I need to check the head angle on the milling machine, as a small error there is really amplified when you're using a fly cutter. And I think a little bit more refinement on the cutting tool geometry before I do any mission critical work. You know, like skimming a cylinder head for instance, for those of you who have seen the first Project Pippa video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the comments.